is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and today we're going to be going over a chronic pain patient, constipation, knee problems, um, herniated disc, all types of spinal dysfunction, headaches, everything basically, and it's been going on chronically and it's complicated by having Lyme's disease. So we're going to show you how we treat that comprehensively from analysis through treatment decompression and also uh, treating and adjusting on the X, Y, and Z axes. Okay, let's check our posture first. And we're going to have Amy flex her head forward and then backwards. And take a deep breath and relax so she knows what to do. Now she's got a high left shoulder here which shows that her head is translated on the X axis to the right. She's also got a little bit of a forward posture, which is why her shoulders are rounding a little bit. Now she's a side sleeper, so you can tell she's sleeping like that. She's got more space on the right side than the left side, so her pelvis is translated to the left of center. So what that tells me is she's got a curvature in her spine, which is a scoliosis. So first thing we're going to do is decompress her on the y-axis. So Amy, let's have you lay right here. I'm just going to put the chart right there for now. And Amy has been through the mill. How many doctors have you seen for these problems, Amy? Probably 25. About 20 to 25 doctors for these problems. There we go. And so now she is choosing the natural route and physical medicine route. And she's a very good patient. She does what we talk about at home, sits right, sleeps right. But still has a lot of issues going on because of neurological interference from the verb of being subluxated. Which, by the way, is the underlying cause of a lot of these things. Okay, so we're going to just wait till she breathes through her nose and then we're going to hit her perfect. That was perfect. That was very smooth today. You feel that all the way down today? Very good. And again, we always check the reflexes afterwards. That was perfect. Now, we don't treat constipation or hiatal hernia or any other conditions for those conditions, but what we're treating is the underlying cause of why they have those conditions. So we're going to adjust her neck right there and right there. Much better today. Good. That was a lot smoother, wasn't it? I always do better under. <laughs> I do. Golf, anything. Yeah. Here, just lay right here. Yeah. That's no kidding. I hit a second shot right on the green, getting video, and then birdied that same oh hole being video. Okay, let's turn around here and let's go on your tummy. Now, because of Amy's unique problems that she has individually, you're going to find that I'm going to be doing quite a bit more uh, muscular ligaments work. Now, you can see her right leg here is about a half an inch shorter. And when I bring it up, it actually gets longer, and that tightens up in your low back, doesn't it? Yeah. So, first thing we've got is a right sacroiliac in a place right there. Yeah, I'm tighten that up just a tad. Okay. So we're adjusting in the x-axis, the z-axis, and then the y-axis here as well. Now this is her sacrum there, and then on the left side, we're adjusting her sacroiliac a little differently. But this right sacroiliac has been the troublemaker. And then we're getting right down into the L5 vertebra, straight P to A. L4. Now right here is L3. The L3 vertebra and nerves that come out between L3 and uh, L4 supply the colon. Now that can cause constipation and it can also cause diarrhea. So it all depends on the nerve fibers, the autonomic nervous system and how it's functioning. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to get getting really deep in here with my elbow and 
getting into the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius, which are deep pelvic muscles. And then I move down just a bit and get on to her piriformis muscle, which goes from her actual hip joint to her sacrum, or the middle triangular shaped bone. And you just need to have the patient breathing through this. This is quite painful, by the way. But it's one of those hurt so good kind of pains. And I'm putting quite a bit of my pressure and weight into these. I'm sure she can verify that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and right down here, we're getting into the quadratus lumborum, multifidus, and erector spinae musculature. Right where it attaches to the sacrum at the base of the spine. And we did that on the right side. We'll make sure we don't want to get on her bones, but we want to get right in that pocket down here at L5-S1. The right side's worse, though, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but oh, these yeah. are pretty sore here, too. Now, you're going to notice that I'm working my way up. We went from the left and right side of L5 already. Now, I'm on L4. And then I'm going to move up to L3 specifically, right there, and that one's very tender. Yep. And then this L2 right here also supplies her small intestine as it turns into the colon, as well as her gallbladder. Now, on the sides of the mm -hmm. legs here, we have what's called the tensor fascia lata muscle. A lot of people call it their IT bands, and you notice the fibers run this way, but I'm doing a transverse friction massage on them, which is very painful. I'm sorry. Same thing on this side, and we're stimulating the fascia over this muscle. Sorry. Yeah, this is very painful. I'm sorry. All right, now, we're going to get out the maximum myofascial release instrument called the Terminator. Sounds like a jigsaw because it is a modified jigsaw. Clavicle and her east. I'm going to adjust the clavicle where it attaches to the sternum. 
that is called the sternoclavicular joint in the acromion process where it attached to the clavicle that is called the acromioclavicular joint and we're going to have her put her hands out like this so we can get a very good adjustment on the AC joints bilaterally. Now it looks like I'm going to choke her, but I'm actually adjusting the clavicle there on the left, the ribs on the left, all the way down. And then we do the same thing on the right side. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to have you take a nice deep breath in. You want to make sure you're way down below the xiphoid process, which is the tip of the sternum. And she continues to exhale as I pull down. We're going to do that again. There we go. All the way down. Now, because Amy's given us permission to video and talk about her condition, you know, she's been on a bevy of different um, pain medications and muscle relaxers over a period of time. And, a lot of times those will cause you to have bowel dysfunction as well. But what I'm doing right now is I'm actually massaging down into the colon, right into the um, ileocecal valve on the right side. But then on this right side, or left side I mean, over here, we get the valve right between the colon and the rectum. So. We want to work both of those, and you notice I kind of use a circular motion in a clockwise manner. Now, a lot of these are pretty painful, but the patient will usually use the restroom correctly within a 12-hour period from this adjustment. Very good. Let's scoot you all the way up this way, and I'm going to do the anterior pelvic adjustment, too. There we go. This is also a very unique adjustment that I do to a few people that have a specialized pelvic problem. And that is, I'm going to be adjust put this leg flat. There you go. I'm going to be adjusting the sympsis pubis straight down in the Z axis. And you contact the pubic bone anteriorly and just a quick high velocity, low amplitude thrust all the way down. And that's a very painful area to get adjusted in. I know that for a fact because I've had it myself. There we go. Good. Very good. Okay, let's have you set it face towards Renee sideways. There we go. Okay. Make sure and check all the range of motion on every joint that is involved, which is the right shoulder, of course. And there it is. And then we're getting, we've already adjusted the acromioclavicular joint, so what I'm adjusting now with this one is called the glenohumeral joint. That's the ball and socket portion. Excellent. Good. There we go. And and get her elbow. Now she's had a lot of problems with her oh. right wrist. And there we go. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We adjust her digits. And I also grab the hand and squeeze the radius and ulnus together as well as the carpal bones, getting a very good grip right there and transverse pulling this straight out, which helps to align the carpals in such a way as the median nerve can go through there without being pinched. Good. Excellent. There we go. Man, you're adjusting quite well today. Very good. Okay. Now, Amy, would you mind telling our YouTube viewers, uh, you've seen a lot of the chiropractors too, haven't you? What would you say is the major difference in what we do here from other chiropractors? Oh my gosh, there's so many differences. <laughs> okay, well, the biggest is that decompression adjustment, of course, yeah. and just so thorough and make sure that everything's good before I leave. She lined up from head to toe? Exactly. Good. Everything. Good. Not good. just... And do you usually go to the bathroom within 12 hours after yeah, I do that? Yeah, sometimes within an hour. Yeah. Sometimes within six hours. Very good. Yeah. And uh, thank Amy for helping us out with this today. This is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. We'll see you next time.